I wanted to show you how to set up baseline grids for this particular project. Now, as I mentioned in class, we're not going to use them that much in this particular publication because there won't be a lot of paired text and image. However, I wanted to get you in the habit of it now. So I'll show you how to set up a basic one. Um, in fact, it's already set up for you. That's one thing you should realize is that InDesign, whether or not you acknowledge it, has already set one up according to a default. In this case, I've changed the default so you can see what happens when they don't hang together and what you need to do to make them so. So let's start. The first thing I want to do is actually acknowledge that they're there. The easiest way to do that is to use your shortcut, which is Option Command uh, Single, I believe it's Single Quote. But down here is the longer menu-based version, show baseline grid, and that's going to pull up a series of horizontal lines. This is your baseline grid. And the way you change this, right now you can see the type doesn't sit on the baseline grid, and that's the whole point of the baseline grid is that the baseline of the type sits nice on the grid, uh, flush and everything. So we're going to need to change that. So I'm going to come up to my preferences, and I'm going to go to general. And I'll come over here to grids, and up here, is everything baseline grid related. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this to an olive green. It's a little easier on my eyes. The next thing I'm going to do is start this relative to the top of the page. You have the option of margins and we'll come back and fill in this with a very specific number but for now I'm just going to make it relative to the top of the page. The increment will be defaulted to 12 but this number should correspond to whatever it is in your particular body copy typeface. So if it's 11 over 13, that number should be 13. If it's 8 over 10 and a half, that number needs to be 10 and a half. For me, this type is set at 10 over 12, so I'm going to plug in 12 points. And then I'm going to change the view threshold to 50%. That's just going to allow me to zoom out a little bit more and see it. The final thing I'm going to do is uncheck grids and back. That'll mean my baseline grid floats over the top of all my text and images so that if I have any full page imagery, I can still see them. The grids, that is, not the images. I'm going to click OK, and you'll see how that changed a little bit, but not much. The next thing I want to do is begin the baseline grid to the top of my predefined Cheechold-esque text box. So I'm going to grab the rectangular frame tool and measure from the very top of this page down to my text box. And that distance is 5 pica four point. I'm going to copy that, pull up the grids panel again and plug this number in there and click OK. Now you can see that the grid begins with my text box. However, as we look at this, the type is still floating above the baseline. So the final thing that I need to do is go to Object, Text Frame Options, and in order to do this I do need to select the primary text frame that I'm working with. I'm going to go to baseline options and change the offset from ascent to letting. They all have their uses and as you become more well versed with InDesign you'll know when to deploy one opposed to the other. But in this case we are going to use letting and you can see that these sit now right nice and perfect on the baseline and are aligned. The reason why this one does not is because of my paragraph style I've elected to use a half leaded line to space paragraphs so that when you instead of a full leaded line, this is now a half. So every other paragraph will sit on the lines. For me, that's good enough. If you were really uh, looking to see what it looked like with the full line on every single one, we'll go into indents and spacing and I'll change this to one. Pika. And there they all sit. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.